cut some pieces. I got the mini mill out, drilled five holes in that piece of channel. It's just clamped in there right now. It's the same pattern found here. We're one hole up on this pattern. So I need to drill two holes in this plate uh, piece of channel right here. So we're going to take it back out after I carefully mark it. And we're going to drill it in the mini mill. I double checked all my heights. I've got this clamped up. I can't really get a good mark on it where it's at, so I put the best mark I could. And then I'm going to take this off, take this out, and be very careful that I don't move this, and then remark it nicely. Alright, got it off, laid it down. We're going to mark this. update got this stuff all clamped up got a temporary two inch piece to keep this parallel with this front tube got a nice open weld joint up here and I'm just gonna tack this in and then this is fully tacked together to the point where we can move around with it and see what we think there it is all tacked in Moving on. Now that we've got that all tacked up, we need to consider what we're going to do next. Before we talk about that, I'm going to take back my shop or my bench space from the mini mill. Brush her off a bit before I put her away and give her a spray. After more drilling, Now we have two holes, and there's going to be grommets in them, I promise. They're over here, but there's no sense in putting them in there now. I still have to take this out and you know fully weld everything. Welcome everyone, and hello YouTube. Today we're doing another lawnmower edition, and we're going to see what's in this box. Last season, I went around and picked up all the little bits and pieces for this project and put them in this box. I don't really remember what's in here, but I do know all the stuff that needs to go in here should be in here. Alright, motor controller. And actually, I must have started planning for this last year because I made this pigtail. And... I got some silicone wire, some of the old motor wire which I may end up reusing, the USB port, the USB cable, got some wire wrap stuff, and lots of XT60s, and a big blade fuse holder which isn't going to be big enough. So, oh, we got Beck and we did find the other battery. So we have the battery holders, all of that, well most of that, we've got to figure out how we're going to get it in here. Uh, we've got a kind of a mess in there. We're going to unbolt this. You can see it got notched for the motor wires. And the USB I was originally going to put it in this door, but obviously there's really not enough room there. And I don't want to put anything in this door. And one of the things I'm noticing that I don't have that I would like is some magnets to possibly hold this door shut. So I'm going to add that to the list right now. Magnets. Oh boy, there's some metal chips in there, so I'm going to clean that out before I start laying bits and pieces in there. Some coffee and some deliberating and parts finding. All right, we've got some crimps and uh, ferrules and whatever, not ferrules, but butts, butt connectors and spade connectors and hoops and grommets. And I went and found this 
little gem. So this is the original battery box off of the scooter, the original scooter. And it has this nice 80 amp fuse in it. And this holder that's riveted on there. So we're going to drill that off and I want to use that in this build. And I may actually, I was looking at this, these sweet SB connectors, these things are awesome. Uh, I may use those, but I don't know as if we got enough space in here because check out the layout. What we got here is to the side. Now, that's how we're going to do this. And this is just in here. The, the battery holders are going to get double-sided taped down when we're done painting in here. But it is important to note that this guy I want direct mounted to the metal chassis. It's basically the whole thing is a heat sink. And I want it direct connected to this platform. This is actually going to get remote mounted somewhere up in this top tube because I don't want it down here in between these two magnetic fields doing their thing and in a metal enclosure. So this antenna needs to go up high and I'm going to get it out of the way. So there's going to be an extension of these cables. And they're going to go up through that wire chase that we discussed in the earlier videos. These power wires are going to come in here for these motors. They're going to get direct connected to these two terminals. And for that, I'm going to have to splice on some new wire. Go through and find the right, what I think should be the right drill bit here. I think that's what I'm going to start with. And that is a 1 8 drill bit. Shh, don't tell Milwaukee. this point I think I'm deciding against it just because they take up so much space. The reality is that the XT, XT60 is much more effective uh, as far as like space management and I've already got them up here so that would be like the bottleneck anyway. Apologies for the shadows but we've got the Milwaukee soldering iron out again. She's putting in work. We're going to solder some XT60s. I'm going to show you this. This is this. So here's your common lead. There's a 3 8 ring terminal on there. This is the factory wire from the wheelchair company. And then this is the maxi, 80 amp maxi fuse. And it goes to these two XT60 pigtails that I crimped on a couple of these. These two grounds have to get soldered to the negative sides of these two XT60s. And those two XT60s are going to plug in here. And then these two are for each of my batteries. So there's the finished pigtail harness. Here's your common lead. This guy in the center. And then there's your battery one and two. These plug into the batteries themselves. Driver in there where I want it. I've got it far enough from the back wall that I can plug the micro USB in and out. And now I'm going to use this spring loaded punch to pop these holes and then I'll drill them. The eighth inch drill I already had loaded up in this not Milwaukee drill. I still got to edit this video out, so I'm going to finish it for tonight. I'm sorry for the, the uh, editing. I apologize. I did this over several days, and 
stuff kind of got messed up where it was and how I put it together. So it is what it is. If you like what you see today, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Uh, I'll be back next week. I'm going to keep keep tapping away. And uh, next week we're going to see some movement on these motors. I'm going to run uh, the RC signals up. We're going to cut a hole in the tube. And... We're going to see some action here. We may not actually have it on the ground, but we'll we'll jack it up and we'll run the motors and I'll show you guys the uh, laptop application that, you know, the Sabertooth works with and um, we'll make it interesting. All right. Well, with that, thank you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I'm out.